Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to another signal processing tutorial. Now, in a previous video, we calculated the frequency response H of Z of a digital filter here. Now, when I went to implement this filter in a future video, I realized that because of some rounding that we'd made, uh, it wasn't going to work anymore. So, I've gone back and I've just done things a little more precisely. So, we now have our new transfer function H of Z here. Um, I just want to point out that the methods that was used in uh, the creation of this was exactly the same as the one above, just with slightly less rounding. Okay, so before we get started on today's video, I'd like to point out uh, this inverse Z transform here. Now in a previous video, I made this transformation, but didn't specifically state that it was the inverse Z transform. The purpose for today's video is to get an equation for Y of N. Now, in a digital filter, y of n responds to our current output. Thus, if we can get an equation for y of n from our frequency response here, we can get a filter that we can implement in something like C++ or Python or some other coding language. So, how do we do that? Well, we'll do a little bit of algebra. We'll use our inverse C transform. So, let's get started. Firstly, we know that h of z is equal to y of z divided by x of z and this just comes from y of z is equal to our input x of z times our frequency response h of z okay and then we just simply divide both sides by x of z and we get an equation for h of z so so let's replace our h of z here with our y of z x of z Now remember that as the goal of this video is to get all of these terms as x's of n's and y's of n's, we need to apply this inverse Z transform. However, we first need to get it into a form where it's appropriate. Our inverse Z transform states that we have to have an x to the z term multiplied by z to the power of negative b. So how can we do that here? Well, one way I can think of, and I'd probably do this step anyway because we hate denominators, is to multiply through by the denominators of both sides of our equation. So we'll multiply through top and bottom by x of z times and then all of this mess here. Let's do that now. On our left hand side the x of z will cancel and we'll be left with y of z times this denominator here that will give us y of z times by 1 minus 2.435 4 y of z multiplied by z to the power of negative 1 and we might just skip ahead here and then all of that is equal to our denominator on this side will now cancel and we'll be left with our numerator multiplied by x of z Okay, so we now have our equation. We can apply our inverse Z transform. So you might be wondering, hey, this Y of Z term and this X of Z term here have no Z to the power of negative B. So how do we do the transformation? Well, if it helps, you can think of this as multiplied by Z to the power of zero because this would simply cancel and give us one leaving Y of Z. So let's make the transformation now. We'll just get a copy of this to make it a bit easier okay so in our first instance we have a coefficient of a of 1 so we have 1 times our x of z in this case which is y of z times by z to the power of a negative 0 so when transforming we have a which is simply 1 times our y of n minus b which is 0 so we can just leave that as n minus and then our a coefficient for our second term is negative 2.4354 our b in this case here is simply 1 that'll give us negative 2.4354 y of n minus 1 and then we'll repeat that process for all of our terms here we'll just skip ahead for that
And then as before, that is still all equal to Okay, so there we have it. We've got an equation for y of n. We can simply subtract all of these terms here to the right hand side and we'll have an equation for y of n. So why is this exciting? Well, this allows us to create any digital filter where we can calculate its digital frequency response, which we've learned how to do. We can use any standard Butterworth, Chebyshev or any filter, transform that into the frequency response that we want it to have use the bilinear transform that we've learned and then from that calculate an equation for something that we can put into C++ and we can use that in our everyday lives or working lives or whatever you have. So let's just quickly rearrange this to get an equation for y of n and then in the next video we'll go through implementing this in code so hopefully you'll be able to see it work. Okay so on our left hand side we'll have y of n and then that will be equal to our original x terms and then we'll cancel all of these terms to the right hand side. To cancel out n take 1 term we need to add 2.4354 y of n take 1 to the other side. You've probably seen this before, you probably know how to do this. We might just skip ahead here. Okay, so you might be wondering, what does all this mean? Well, this is the beauty of digital filters, and when I actually first found this out, I was confused, I didn't believe it. So, essentially, where we have xn, that's referring to our current input. So if we say our red dot here is our current input wave, our x of n is our current input sample, then our n minus 2 is simply our input from two samples ago, so it would be this dot here. Likewise, our n minus 4 would be our input from four samples ago, so it would be this one here. And we simply scale and subtract and add these samples to each other as well as our previous outputs to get our filter. So our y of n take 1 is referring to our output one sample ago. Likewise, our y of n take 4 is referring to our output from four samples ago. So we can create a digital filter which has a frequency response between 6 and 8 kilohertz simply by scaling our inputs and outputs with the coefficients we've got here and adding and subtracting them from one another to filter our signal. Okay, I hope that you are as impressed by that as I am. Okay guys, that is all for this one. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, in the next video we'll go through the implementation of this in C++. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a different video because uh, firstly we're not going to be writing, we're going to be coding and we're going to be doing that on Linux. So hopefully that's all fun. While we'll be doing a bit of coding in the next one, I'll make sure that we explain all the steps uh, so that if you're unfamiliar with it, uh, that it shouldn't be too abstract to you. And if you are, hopefully you'll get some useful skills to be able to implement digital filters of your own in the future. I'll see you guys in the next one.